Welcome to Church at Home. We are so excited that you are joining us. For updates regarding Church at Home, or if you need to contact us with any questions, visit vineyardnorthridge.org slash updates. We hope you enjoyed this message. Well, greetings, my friends. This is a very unusual uh, situation for me. Well, and I'm not an exception. It's an unusual situation for all of us. And I would want to say in America, but no, all over the world. We are in very interesting times right now. And people have different reactions to this time. And this time, when I think about it, it's very revealing. It's very exposing. The Bible actually calls times like that a time of trial or test. So I'm going to read to you a familiar scripture. Most of you probably heard it before. It's found in the book of James, chapter 1, verses 2 through 4. It says, Consider it all joy, my brethren, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the test of your faith produces endurance, and let the endurance have its perfect result, so that you, listen to that, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. That's the interpretation that the Bible gives to times like that, believe it or not. You would say, Dennis, what are you talking about? It's so unnatural. What do you rejoice at a time like that? But, well, I'm just quoting you the Bible, friends. All I can tell you. So let's, let's look a little closer to that. So this is the time of trial that can be translated as a time of testing. And what testing does, it's not just to blame you. Oh, you had a... It, it's called the testing of your faith. It's so easy to, to think and to make yourself believe that you're full of faith in God or in God's promises, in God's word, when everything goes well, when things are like hunky-dory, but when things begin to fall apart. And by the way, the, the name of this series of these messages, as Pastor Neil called it, when things go sideways, what to do when chaos happens. So what, what, it actually reveals the content of our faith. The content, the content of our heart, what's inside of us, what's deep down comes up to the surface and we have to face it. So uh, I can like imagine a scale from like on one side of the scale is joy, peace, confidence, expectation, uh, joyous anticipation, somewhere in the middle you're perplexed, you're puzzled, you're like, you're shaking, you're not sure, you're, you're kind of shocked. At the very other side of this spectrum would be full-blown panic attack and like a lot of anxiety and depression. So I'll ask you a question that only you can really answer, like what comes up in you today? When you find yourself in the middle of that, are you somewhere closer to this side? Are you somewhere closer to that side? Are you somewhere in the middle? Or each day you're kind of moving and shifting? So you know the answer. Actually, you don't need much time to answer that. You know it right now. And the Bible tells us what to do about it. It gives us prescription, so to speak. So basically, I want to talk to you about, like I already mentioned that. What, what does it all mean? Like the, the, the world is going nuts. Uh, for most of us, it's unprecedented, as Pastor Neil said in previous message. But for me, bits and pieces of that is precedented because I, I, I lived through the collapse of my home country, which is Soviet Union. When it collapsed, let me tell you, like, nobody knew anything. Stores were empty. There was no food. There was no job. The value of human life was so low. People were killed left and right. Everybody was in survival mode. Nobody could plan anything ahead of time more than one day at a time. People lost their life savings, all of it. They worked for 60 years and all was gone overnight. So I survived that and I moved to America and I thought I will never see anything like that again. And all of a sudden I see very similar pictures like empty shelves, people are in lines. Uh, you know, you know the story. I don't have to go there. So let me tell you something that is very important for us to understand in a situation like that. I want you to know who is your enemy number one that you're called to fight in a situation like that. 
And I want to name this enemy. This enemy is fear. A lot of you are fearful right now. A lot of you are anxious right now. Facebook became like a toxic land after Chernobyl explosion. Seriously. I, like, I, I almost have to put on the whole armor of God before I log on to my account on Facebook. All these people that I've been reading their wonderful posts like three months ago, all of a sudden I see very different posts right now. And the ranges from panicking to angry at the government, all kinds of stuff. Very few people actually speak of the goodness of God today. And I'm kind of getting away from my notes, but it's okay. It's okay. I'm getting into my preaching mode, so you'll have to forgive me. And by the way, our media people are so amazing. They set up everything, but they told me stay, hold on to this table to stay in the camera. So I'm trying my best. I'm exercising my faith right now, so you have to be sympathetic with me. Well, anyway... So I want to tell you that your biggest enemy today is not the virus. Your biggest enemy today is not the economy collapsing. Your biggest enemy today is not the unemployment situation. It's not your biggest enemy. Your biggest enemy is inside of you. It's fear. And enemy is actually the enemy of God. Satan uses fear to destroy everything that God is trying to do today. The fear is the opposite of faith. God moves and does his things in the visible, out of invisible realm through people's faith in love. An enemy is trying to plant his seeds of fear and panic into believers' hearts so that they wouldn't accomplish what God is calling them to accomplish. And only you can do something about it. Only you. Fear knocks at the door, but you have the power to not let it enter and dwell in you. So this is the time of testing your faith. This is the time. It's a call to fight. And first thing you need to fight is your fears. I was supposed to teach about imagination. And many people were full of anticipation. And me too. But let me tell you something. I am going to teach in the future. In the near future about the imagination. And how important it is in our life. Now, I will just briefly mention that imagination is the door to your heart. And it can work for you. It can extend the kingdom of God together with you and through you. Or it can actually do a lot of damage to you and people around you. Imagination using the, using, uses the images that you let enter into you. And they become seeds. And these seeds begin to take root and grow. And finally, you will reap the harvest. And this harvest, it's going to be either despair or faith manifested. Power of God manifested through you. So, how do you fight? You would say, Dennis, you convinced us. I mean, we do find ourselves. And again, it's not an arrogance, people. It's not an arrogance to say that, you know what? It's possible to be joyous in this time. It's possible to stand firmly on the promises of God. To take the word of God seriously. To begin to really fight for the faith of God to operate in your life. So how do you fight? How do you overcome the fear of God? The, the, the answer is so simple. It boils down to one verse in the Bible. 1 John four eighteen. It says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Where do you find this perfect love? This perfect love is found in the gospel of Jesus Christ. God revealed himself, his nature, his heart's desire, his ideas for you personally. He wants to give you a future full of hope. And he reveals it all in Jesus Christ. That's the gospel. Romans 8, that's a favorite chapter of many Christians. People love to pick some verses. I'll, I'll read the whole thing so that you would know the context. Romans 8, verses 31 through 37 what then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all. How will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Christ Jesus, he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us, who will, and then he asked this question, and I know this verse by heart. 
He says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation, will distress, will persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword. He lists all these negative things that were actually part of his daily reality. Persecution, sword. Basically, the whole world was going against Apostle Paul when he was accomplishing God's will to kill him and destroy him. And he said, in the middle of all of that, he said, I experience the fullness of the love of God in Christ Jesus. And he said, now, by experience, I know that nothing is able to separate me from this reality. And that's a call for all of us. Seriously, that's a call for all of us. Some people would say, Dennis, like, but this is all Bible. We're talking about real life here. That's your problem right there. You take this world and what happens in this world more real than what you read in the Word of God. I'm sorry, I'm a, I might sound harsh, but like your only hope really to get established in something unmovable, in unshakable. And you will find it nowhere but in the Word of God. Gosh, I sound like an old preacher today, but I'm sorry. That's how it sounds sometimes. Maybe I'm growing old. I don't know. Well, let me finish with this. So it's a test of your faith, and whatever comes to surface, you, you know what it is, what's inside of you. You know what to do. You really need to get yourself saved again. You really need to preach the gospel to yourself before you can be helpful to other people and you can be used by God to minister His, his love and His presence during the time like that. So I also want to declare that this is an opportunity to be His witness. If you think about it, who is, who is a witness? A witness is someone who has first-hand experiential knowledge of something. If I just hear about something, if it's a second-hand knowledge, and I share it, it, it may have an impact, it may have an influence, but it's not as powerful. All of us, I believe, are called to experience the reality of God's presence, interacting with Him, hearing from Him, receiving answers from Him, and then shining this light to others. You know, when even the smallest light shines most brightly, in the times of darkness. And this is, this is the times of darkness. Your little light yet you think is little can really, really give a lot of hope to people. Give a lot of future to people. Can give a lot of strength to people. I want to finish with this. Whatever happens, the Bible says guard your heart for out of it come the issues of life. So... There's a very special place in your being. It's called your heart. And God wants to dwell there. He wants to be real there. And He wants to manifest out of there through you. Again, I remembered Facebook today as a toxic land. There are two reports. There are only two reports, actually. And one report is the report of majority of people, always. And there's a temptation to believe the report of majority that you hear. But if you read the Bible, in the Bible there was always, always God's minority who gave a different report in every situation. You remember the story of ten spies that were sent uh, to the promised land. And here's the ratio, eight to two. Eight gave very factual, very accurate report of what they've seen. Yet God called this report evil report that was given out of the evil, unbelieving hearts. Two people gave different kind of report. Two, minority. So listen, Bible gives us stories like that so that you would be able to make your choice. So I want you today, if you're a Christian, to make this choice to be God's minority. To give God's report. And if you are not sure what God's report. Ask God to give you his view on things. His report. What is it that you are supposed to spread? Any animal can react to things. Only human beings can respond. Any human being can react to things. Only God's people can truly respond with God's word. This is my call to you. This, this is a very special time. And actually, believe it or not, I am excited about this time. Everything is disrupted. 
Everything continues to be disrupted. We can't really plan anything, yet God becomes more real to people who choose to follow Him for real during this time. Many churches, I believe, will, will raise up. God will give you creative ideas how to do ministry in times like that when everything is disrupted. And I have a special request for those of you who maybe consider yourself a Christian, but you're not sure because you never experienced personally uh, meeting with Jesus, talking to him in your heart and your spirit. I want you to pray to invite Jesus into your heart today. Right after you finish watching this, just pray the simple prayer. Mean it from the heart. Jesus, I come to you and I'm asking you, please come into my heart. Take my life. I believe that you died for me and you rose again. And you want to become reality for me. Say this little prayer. And if you do it, please let us know. Also, I am talking to Christians that might be struggling with this time. If you need any kind of support, moral support, or you need a prayer, contact us through our website. And one of our ministry team members will contact you and pray with you and for you. Well, I'm going to bless you guys. I believe you're going to stand firm. Whatever is not of God is going to be shaken off. But whatever is of God is going to grow strong in your life. I believe that. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. We hope you enjoyed this message. For updates to contact us and ways to give, visit vineyardnorthridge.org slash church at home. If you need prayer, we would love to pray for you. Fill out a form on our website under contact to submit a prayer request. You can also find us on social media at Vineyard Northridge. Thank you so much for watching.